This is Argyle on Scotland's west coast by Loch Gilpin, and all about are the purple hills and the heather. This is the beauty that has inspired songs through the ages and nostalgic memories for Scots in exile. Yet few people realize that heather can be put to some use, as it happens one most fitting. It is in fact the base of one of the most distinctive of traditional Scottish perfumes. The scientist who has created not only the scent of heather, but other Highland perfumes, is Mr. McAndrace, a descendant of the first house of Stuart, whose love of Scottish tradition is evident in the names and character he gives to his scents. Anyway, to return to the process, having bruised the heather as we saw, we're ready for the distilling. This, of course, being a land of experts when it comes to distilling, although scent is not usually the end product. A solvent is added to the heather and then the contents of the flask heated. This eventually, with blending and maturity, will become heather bloom, which sounds romantic enough, as does the Stuart white rose or Scottish orchid. But other scents have to unfamiliar ears rather stranger names. For example, bog myrtle or highland peat, which recaptures the deep, rich fragrance of a peat fire. But to a Scot away from home, even the names can conjure up beauty. The distilling process speaks for itself, the escaping steam passing through a condenser and dripping off into a bottle to be later added or returned to the perfume proper in the flask. When the heather is sufficiently extracted, the solution is put through a filter and later certain fixatives added before being left for six months to mature. The scents of the highlands may not sound terribly exotic compared with, say, Knights of Passion, but to the connoisseur and Scots all over the world, it conjures up all the enchantment of the Purple Hills. On the subject of luck.